The actual details of the blood libel ritual carried out to fulfill this curse upon the Jews placed on them by Pilate in the name of Caesar, then the god of monotheist Rome, began being circulated as early as 38 AD by Appion, and are here repeated from his writings by Flavius Josephus, the Hebrew rabbi legionnaire and nephew of Caesar. Quote, Antioch has found in our temple a bed and a man lying upon it, with a small table before him, full of dainties, from the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the dry land. He fell down upon his knees and begged to be released, and that when the king bid him sit down and tell him who he was and why he dwelt there and what was the meaning of those various sorts of food that were set before him, him the man made a lamentable complaint, and with sighs and tears in his eyes gave him this account of the distress he was in, and said that he was a Greek, and that as he went over his province in order to get his living, he was seized upon by foreigners on a sudden, and brought to this temple, and shut up therein, and was seen by nobody but was fattened by these curious provisions thus set before him, and that truly, at the first such unexpected advantages, seemed to him matter of great joy, that after a while he inquired of the servants that came to him, and was by them informed that it was in order to the fulfilling a law of the Jews, which they must not tell him, that he was thus fed, and that they did the same at a set time every year, that they used to catch a Greek foreigner and fat him thus up every year and then lead him to a certain wood and kill him and sacrifice with their accustomed solemnities and taste of his entrails and take an oath upon this sacrificing a Greek that they would ever be at enmity with the Greeks and that then they threw the remaining parts of the miserable wretch into a certain pit. Close quote from Against Appion by Flavius Josephus. The accusation of ritual human sacrifice was repeated in the early feudal dark ages, the early 4th century AD, by Socrates, the Greek Christian church historian of the newly constructed city of Constantinople, sponsored by Emperor Constantine I, who converted to Christianity around the same time. Quote, in this way they indulged in many absurdities, and at length, impelled by drunkenness, they were guilty of scoffing at Christians and even Christ himself, and in derision of the cross and those who put their trust in the crucified one, they seized a Christian boy, and having bound him to a cross, began to laugh and sneer at him. But in a little while, becoming so transported with fury, they scourged the child until he died under their hands. This conduct occasioned a sharp conflict between them and the Christians, and as soon as the emperors were informed of the circumstance, they issued orders to the governor of the province to find out and punish the delinquents. Close quote. From the Ecclesiastical History, Book 7, Chapter 16, by Socrates Scholasticus. By the time of Christian St. Augustine of Hippo, Algeria, around the turn of the 5th century AD, the blood libel was already deeply ingrained in association with the accusation of magic in general, repeated from the quote in Deuteronomy. Moreover, Against those magic arts, concerning which some men, exceedingly wretched and exceedingly impious, delight to boast, may not public opinion itself be brought forward as a witness. For why are those arts so severely punished by the laws, if they are the works of deities who ought to be worshipped? Shall it be said that the Christians have ordained those laws by which magic arts are punished? 
with what other meaning, except that these sorceries are without doubt pernicious to the human race. End quote. From City of God, Book 8, Chapter 19, by St. Augustine. The French Pope, Innocent VI, born Etienne Aubert, issued a rejection of all allegations of the blood libel in 1247, reacting to the repetition of it by Thomas of Cambury, who said that solo sanguine cristiano, only Christian blood, had to be shed annually to cure the Jews of generational hemorrhages. Quote, Certain of the clergy and princes, nobles, and great lords of your cities and dioceses have falsely devised certain godless plans against the Jews, unjustly depriving them by force of their property and appropriating it themselves. They falsely charge them with dividing up among themselves on the Passover the heart of a murdered boy. In their malice they ascribe every murder, wherever it chanced to occur, to the Jews. And on the ground of this and other fabrications, they are filled with rage against them, rob them of their possessions without any formal accusation, without confession, and without legal trial and conviction, contrary to the privileges granted to them by the Apostolic See since it is our pleasure that they shall not be disturbed we ordain that ye behave toward them in a friendly and kind manner whenever any unjust attacks upon them come under your notice redress their injuries and do not suffer them to be visited in the future by similar tribulations Close quote. from mandate to the prelates of germany and france to annul all measures adopted against the Jews on account of the ritual murder libel and to prevent accusation of Arabs on similar charges by Pope Innocent the sixth in 1486 came the publication of the witch's hammer a detailed account of alleged satanic sabbats involving the practice of all sorts of magic including copulating with the goat foot god Pan, provided from the confessions under torture of gypsies and pagans obtained during the crusade against the Albigensian heresy of Catharism called the Inquisition, begun almost 300 years prior. The witch's hammer makes it clear that the false accusations of Socrates Scholasticus remained unforgotten. Quote, the method by which they profess their sacrilege through an open pact of fidelity to devils varies according to the several practices to which different witches are addicted. And to understand this, it first must be noted that there are, as was shown in the first part of this treatise, three kinds of witches, namely, those who injure but cannot cure, those who cure but through some strange pact with the devil, cannot injure, and those who both injure and cure. And among those who injure, one class in particular stands out, which can perform every sort of witchcraft and spell, comprehending all that all the others individually can do. Wherefore, if we describe the method of profession in their case, it will suffice also for all the other kinds. And this class is made up of those who, against every instinct of human or animal nature, are in the habit of eating and devouring the children of their own species. Close quote. From Malleus Maleficarum, Part 2, Chapter 2. Edited by James Springer and Henry Kramer. It was almost exactly around this time give or take merely a decade at most, that we find the first publication of a grimoire, or book of magic, emanate from the Italian Renaissance. The greater key of King Solomon describes the attributes and images for constructing amulets 
that honor in Hebrew letters the seven planetary or Olympic deities. From this work we find the following description for how to make an animal sacrifice using the blood of a bat. Quote, After this, take the needle or other convenient instrument of art, as will be said later on, and pierce the bat in the vein which is in the right wing, and collect the blood in a small vessel. Close quote. From Clavicula Salamanus, Book 2, Chapter 16, edited by S. L. McGregor Mathers. These grimoires have, for the last 500 years or so, provided the sole inspiration for the study of theoretical magic. They include theurgies and demonologies, evocations and invocations, hundreds of mathematical number squares, and countless squiggles symbolizing the signatures of hundreds or thousands of sentient spirits inhabiting limitless realms in an invisible landscape overlapping our own. Quote, Take your kid, place it on a block with the throat turned upward, so that it may be easy for you to cut it. Be ready with your knife, and cut the throat at a single stroke, pronouncing the name of the spirit whom you wish to invoke. Whosoever would invoke the devil must sacrifice to him a dog, a cat, and a hen. These animals must be the property of the operator, who must also pledge himself to eternal fidelity and obedience, and must receive a special mark upon his body impressed by the devil himself. His recompense is an absolute control over three infernal spirits, respectively of earth, water, and air. Close quote. From the Book of Black Magic, Chapter 2, by A.E. Waite. 